have some fun this morning? Yeah. Let's go. Let's get after it. At, ooh, there we are. Um, at Encounter on Wednesday nights, um, we have a countdown, and then it goes into like an intro video that I made for Encounter every week. And we like to really pump it up loud and get the students all hyped up. And Tom was telling me maybe we should do that on Sunday mornings. I'll yeah. just get this light, nice, loud intro video to the beginning of sort of. No. Um, no, we are glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, just a couple of announcements as we get rolling. Um, if you're a first-time guest with us, if you could do me a favor, in the chair in front of you, there should be a yellow card that says Connect Card. Um, and that's a way for us to get some information from you so we can get you information about our church. You can also find these out on a table in the foyer just to the right of the door. Um, and so we use those, again, so we can get you information about our church, who we are, and help you get plugged in with what we're doing here at Whiting Christian Church. Um, at that table in the foyer, we also see some other cards out there as well. We're going to start um, some new things with that. Um, there is a prayer card. Um, so if you have any prayer requests that you would like us to be praying for, or if you have something you want to get on the prayer chain, you can fill out a card out there, and we'll make sure that we be praying for you and get it on the prayer chain if that's what you would like. Uh, there's also a volunteer card out there. Um, if you would like to get plugged in volunteering somewhere here in the church, you can fill out that card and we can get you more information about um, the different roles that we have or uh, get your information to whoever is in charge of that area that you would like to volunteer in. Uh, and the last card that we have out there that's new um, is what we're calling our elder card. Um, and if you have any questions that you would like to ask of the, of the leadership here at Whiting Christian Church, um, you can fill out that card, um, and then uh, one of our elders will come and, and uh, have a conversation with you and get those questions addressed. We just want to make sure that we're communicating well and effectively. Um, and with that as well, uh, we have a newsletter out there on that table that we're going to start um, putting out once a month. Uh, to help keep everybody up to date about what we've got going on ministry-wise and whatnot around the church. Uh, lots of great information uh, in that. Um, also, if you weren't able to join us on last Sunday night for the family meeting, um, this month there is an extra piece of paper in there that has uh, uh, an update uh, sheet in there or whatever to help uh, catch you up with what we talked about at that meeting. Um, and so those are all out there for you to grab and to use. Um, and so the other announcement that I have that I want to talk about is VBS. Uh, so yeah, uh, VBS is coming up um, in June, the beginning of June. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're promoting that now. There's signups out there if you would like to help um, here pretty soon in the May. We use Wednesday nights um, for decorating. Um, and so we're pretty excited about that. Um, Tom has been working hard on building us this massive uh, shipwrecked boat um, to have for VBS, which is pretty amazing. And so we want to just, um, that, it's such a big part for the kids is to be able to have those different decorations that they can get excited about. Um, and 
And so that's coming up uh, here on Wednesdays in May. Um, but registration is open. And so um, if you want to get kiddos registered or share that with people, um, we have cards that we can give you. Um, or you can just send people to our website. And it's right there on the front of our website where they can register for VBS. Uh, so that's coming up. We're excited for that. But let me go ahead and start us off with a word of prayer. Uh, and then we will go to worshiping our God. Uh, dear God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you uh, for this beautiful day and this day that we can come here and worship you and celebrate you, God, um, and lift up praise to you. And so I ask you open up our hearts uh, to whatever you are preparing in this service for us um, and that we walk out of this place a little bit more in love with you. It's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks a lot, Jed. Um, quick question, Jed, for you. Um, Camp Nabola stuff. Um, is that final registration for that, for early bird stuff? Is that May 31st? Correct. Okay, yeah. So, and then we also have, um, it's on, the theme of it is stand this year, and we also have some resources back there for families and their kids. If you guys are interested in camp this coming summer, it's going to be wonderful. Story of Daniel, definitely not one you're going to want to miss. So, uh, for those of you, this is your first time this morning. Welcome. My name is Matt. I'm one of the uh, worship directors here, and uh, we just are so glad to have you here. For those of you who are watching online, welcome. Glad to hear you too, and uh, see you too. And watch we stand this up this morning, sing some songs, and praise Him. Fear cannot survive when we 
guys sound awesome this morning. Take a quick minute, say hello to someone you haven't seen in a little bit. We'll see you back here in just a few seconds. the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in with his love for me. Ooh, his love for me. Ooh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child Lift it up. Uh. 
God, we praise you this morning. And we reflect that this we know, that we will see that enemy run. And we will see victory come on this earth as it is in heaven, Lord. We praise you and we recognize your goodness this morning. Lord, help us to continue to give you everything we have in spirit and in song this morning. Lord, let there be a joyful noise that just runs out these doors, Lord, so that all this community can hear of your goodness. Lord, will you meet us here this morning? It's his name we pray. Amen.
time, chorus. This we know, we will see the enemy run. This we know, we will see the victory come. We hold on to every promise you ever made. Jesus, you are unfailing. Father God, we praise you this morning. We are just in awe of your power and your majesty and your goodness. Lord, we know that through all the chaos that this world has to offer, Lord, you reign over it all. Lord, you've won the battle. You've won the war. It's just a matter of time. Lord, we worship you. We praise you in this space this morning. Lord, let your spirit dwell richly among this family here, Lord. Let it dwell richly. Let us experience you in a way in this new sermon series, Lord, that we haven't experienced you before. Lord, let your word permeate through our hearts this morning. I pray to be with Brother Judd this morning as he continues to lead us, Lord. I pray to be with Larry as he continues to lead us with communion and meditation this morning. Lord, would you speak through our leaders? Would you be with our leaders that are up and coming, Lord? Will you be with our leaders and our elders who have served so faithfully. Lord, be our leader in these next steps, Lord. We give everything we have to you this morning, and it's your son's name we pray. Amen. You guys may be seated. When Jed was talking about the supper last week, I thought he was going to say there was some leftover chicken, but I guess not. Okay, for, for communion this morning, here we go. If you would, imagine w with me a simple conversation with the God of the universe. It might start with, oh, hi God, how was your day? What kind of answer do you think you would, you would get? Something like, well, <clears throat> I just spent the last 24 hours holding the universe together by the power of my word. I watched one of my most faithful believers endure torture for my name. <clears throat> one of my children took his own life today. I listened to a lot of whining and complaining. Remember that? Solar eclipse earlier in the week? <laughs> I've been busy crushing the devil's plans. I didn't hear from about 90% of my family. The world system cranked out more negative propaganda against me today. And as usual, I won't sleep tonight. I kept every one of my promises today, and I'll do the same thing tomorrow and the next day, and the next. Psalm 19, verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and skies proclaim the works of his hands. Psalm 33, 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Psalm 33, 9, <clears throat> He speaks, and it is done. He commands and it stands fast. Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. John 3, 16 through 18, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish or have eternal, should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son to, into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of what the God's only son. <clears throat> we often come to communion 
uh, saying to God, well, here's how my week looked, but never paused to, to ask, you know, God, show me your, your thoughts this week. Take this time to consider the thoughts of God. After all, communion was his idea. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much, Lord. You are so worthy of all our praise. Thank you for this communion time and for the gift of your son, Jesus. Help us spend more time considering you, Lord. Give us the courage and strength to see you, to hear that still, small voice of your spirit. You, powerful and mighty, offer us sinners a personal relationship with you, with perfect you. Forgive us, Father, for the times we forget all about you. Strengthen us so we will offer forgiveness, acceptance, peace, and joy to all those we meet. We praise you and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to because it relates somewhat to offering time. <clears throat> there was this small family, mom, dad, and about an eight-year-old boy going home from church. And dad was complaining all the way. It was too hot in there. Those people were snobs. Preacher t talked all about me. I didn't care for that. The music was too loud. On and on he went. And the boy in the back seat just listened to it all. And when he was done, he says, you know, dad, I think you got a pretty good deal for a dollar. Come on, come on. <laughs> you don't get it? <clears throat> okay, shouldn't have done that one. Uh, <laughs> Matthew 6.33 says, uh, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When I first started really hearing God's word. This is the first verse I remember. And over the years, it has become a life verse for me. Well, what are all the things that Jesus refers to? Well, he refers to basic stuff like clothes, food, drink, basic elements for daily life. Jesus reminds us that God values his kids and takes care of them. He's telling us to trust him to provide and <clears throat> to always put him first. One of the greatest barriers to giving and generosity is fear that we won't have enough. A couple of weeks ago at Encounter, Jed, Jed shared that in the United States, there are more um, of those, what do you call them? Storage units. There are more storage units than we have um, fast food places. Imagine that. <laughs> and we don't have enough. Tithing is one way to remind ourselves to put God first and to trust him for our daily needs. So as we prepare to receive the tithes and offering this morning, think about this verse. Are you seeking God's kingdom first? 
Are you trusting him with your finances? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, uh, we just thank you uh, for this time to continue to worship you with our tithes and offering. I pray that they would be acceptable to you, that they would be used to grow your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hello again, everyone. So this morning, you know, I want, I want to talk a little bit about quirks. You know, everybody has their own quirks, the things that make them a little bit different. Um, and, and, you know, I feel like most of the time you might not know about these until you get married. Um, and then all of a sudden your spouse looks at you one day and says, what's wrong with you? And you're like, what are you talking about? It's that sobering moment when you realize that there's something that you've done your entire life that not everyone else does. Um, you know, one of my quirks wasn't a big deal um, until we had children. Uh, and the quirk is that I don't like things on my skin. Um, you know, I, you know I'm, I don't like things that, like, stay on your skin. Uh, you know, marker marks, glue, sticky stuff. Um, paint, like if you can't just simply wash it off, I'm going to get super annoyed that it's on me. Um, and I'm just going to like sit there at a sink and scrub. Um, and for most of my life, I could avoid most of these things and handle when they did come about. Um, and, and I don't mean like I'm like phobic or anything, um, but right, like if I get Sharpie on my hand, it's one, it's like a distraction that I just like can't have a hard time focusing on anything else because I was like, oh man, I've got got that mark on my hand. I've got to get it off. Um, then Sammy and I decided to have kids. Uh, and first of all, uh, they are a walking mess that hate, or they not hate, they love all the things that I hate. You know, hey, hey, dad, uh, can we draw with markers? Okay, but what do we draw on? What do we draw on? Paper only. And you'll notice Remy today drew on himself, and it drives me nuts. Don't do this. You're not going to get markers. Don't draw on yourself. Dad, can we paint? Mm, no, that's a hard pass. You're going to have to wait for your mom on that. They walk up and put your, their hand on you, and it's all sticky, and it's like, why is your hand sticky? Well, I had a glue stick, and I put it all over my hands. Ugh. Like, my first thought is not even to, like, address it. My first thought is always, don't touch me, right? Like, that's my first thought immediately. Like, if they got paint on their hands, if they're gross and sticky, like, my first thought is not, like, hey, let's d deal with this. It's don't touch me. Please don't touch me, um, right? I, I'm the parent when their child is a mess, holds them like a ticking time bomb, right? Like, I just got to get you to the bath. Uh, if candy didn't wash off, fairly easily, I would be a much better parent because I would never let them touch it. Um, the candy that I hate most right now uh, for my children are suckers. And I don't understand it. Um, like, how do you get sucker slobber everywhere? <laughs> everywhere. It's all over their face, their hands, their arms, their legs. Like, just keep the sucker in your mouth. Like, that's all you've got to do. Like, why is it everywhere? We went from giving you a small treat to all of a sudden needing a bath because apparently a sucker uh, makes you slobber like a wet dog. Like. But it's amazing to me how often with children, um, you know, it just the answer is just, I gotta, I'm just going to throw you in the bath. Like, this isn't even worth my time trying to get the wipes out. And, you know, like, you ate a sucker, bath. You played outside, we're throwing you in the bath. Uh, you played inside, we're throwing you in the bath. Uh, you sat and watched a movie, why are you gross? How did you get dirty enough to need a bath? I just avoid looking at the water bill at this point, you know. It just makes me sad. Um, 
But man, I am so happy to live in a country where keeping my children clean is easy, right? Like, let's just get you in the bath. It's going to be fine. Uh, you know, the ease of water access can be so underappreciated. Uh, and especially when we truly take the time to consider the importance of water, the importance of water. One of the things that amazes me um, is that when you consider food and water, right, they're two of the most basic things that we need to survive. And if you ever watch those like surviving in the wilderness shows, the things that you think that you can do, and then you get out there and you're like, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, right, they're the two things that people have to figure out, right? They need food and they need water. How do I get the food? How do I get the water? And interestingly, we can actually survive quite a while without food. If we have water, we can go weeks without food. But if you have no water, you have days. You only have days. That's how crucial water is. And we actually see that the, the cruciality of water comes into, into the Bible as well. You see it pop up over and over and over again in the Bible, and it's because of the importance of water. In the very beginning of the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth. In that very next verse, what did the Spirit of God hover over? The waters of the deep. That as God created and started to create order from chaos, the earth was originally this chaotic ball of water. And so God creates everything and, and then humans decide to ruin everything. How does God rid the earth of this evil? Well, I'm just going to throw you in the bath. <laughs> he floods the earth. And he floods it and the water raises above the mountains. Even when we look at like the Exodus narrative, water comes up over and over again. God turns the water of the Nile to blood. The Israelites walk through the Red Sea, leaving Egypt. When they're in the wilderness, God provides water for them out of the rock. Again, over and over, we see water come into play in these stories. Uh, you know, often when we talk about the law in the Old Testament, we talk about, you know, the rituals concerning animal sacrifices, but another huge part was purification rituals, where people or priests would need to wash themselves before doing particular things. And sometimes this would have to do with hygiene. We see this in the book of Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 15.5. Anyone who touches his bed must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be unclean till evening. Now, context, this isn't just any bed. You touch the bed, you got to go take a bath. Um, it's an unclean bed is what it's talking about. And so it's a hygiene thing. Um, and, and we also see purification could also be more symbolic. In the book of Nehemiah, uh, they've finished building the walls. They've re, uh, they're working on rebuilding the temple, and they go to have um, their first session of worship together. In Nehemiah 12, 30, it says, After the priests and the Levites had purified themselves, they've purified the people, the city gates, and the wall. And while this purification would have entailed many different things, this likely included bathing and washing clothes. Other places in Scripture, we see water as a sign of life like in the first psalm where the tree is planted near a flowing stream, or in the 23rd psalm where the shepherd leads his sheep beside quiet waters. And so yes, over and over again we see water is of significance. And this theme continues in the New Testament and it helps us understand why in the world 2,000 years after this beginning of the church we're still dunking people in a tank. Why are we still baptizing people in water? You know, last week we talked about baptism of Jesus and our own journey from here on earth to heaven and his baptism taking place in the waters of the Jordan River, uh, which is amazing because it's the same river that the Israelites had to cross in order to enter the promised land. The significance of Jesus' baptism is talked about in one of the letters um, of the apostles, and it's the Apostle John. And in 1 John 5.5, 5, he says this. He says, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. The question is saying, Hey, who is it that makes it from the journey from here on earth to heaven? 
Well, it's those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you notice, this is one of the core questions that we ask people when baptizing them. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? It's important when committing ourselves to God that we understand who is our God that we are committing ourselves to. Not just the Father, but also the Son and the Spirit. So how do we know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? How can we know that answer? Well, John goes on to tell us. In verse 6, he says, This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. It is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. So how did Jesus come by both water and blood? Well, these are major markers in the course of Jesus' ministry on earth. Last week, we talked about his baptism. Uh, That was this amazing moment where we get to see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all present in this one moment. And if you remember from that moment in Matthew, it talks about this is just the beginning of his ministry. This is the start of it. This is where Jesus is beginning. From there, he heads out into the wilderness to be tempted. But we see that the Spirit, in that moment, we see the Spirit came down upon him, and the voice of the Father could be heard saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The waters of Jesus' baptism testify to who he is. And we, we are baptized in water the same as Jesus. We continue to testify to who Jesus is. But this is not the only significance of the waters of baptism. I mentioned the purification process in the Old Testament. Well, there's a cleansing aspect to the waters of baptism. A water that cleans us. Now, in our household, I think I've mentioned this before, but the dishes are technically my responsibility. Sometimes Sammy is an amazing wife and takes care of that for me. Um, But typically, I am the one who is uh, tasked with doing the dishes. Um, And there are some things that I like to clean, and there are some things that I hate to clean when it comes to dishes. I don't mind plates and bowls, depending on what's been on them. Um... I, I have found to despise a bowl that has dried oatmeal in it. Sometimes our kids will have oatmeal for breakfast, and if that oatmeal dries, it's like, what is this? Why is this just glue? Like, it's just, it won't come off. And then Sammy makes fun of me. Why is that bowl just sitting there? Well, I've got to let it soak. <laughs> Pots and pans aren't terrible for the most part. One thing, uh, uh, one thing I really don't like to clean, muffin tins. Um, Sammy will make muffins and they're not always the ones that have the little paper thin wrap around them or whatever and so then to have to sit there and get each section oh, it drives me nuts but of all the dishes that I don't like to clean there's one that stands above the rest and it's the reusable water bottle man alive like cleaning the outside it's whatever it's fine it's easy. It's not too bad. Depending on the bottle, right? Depending on the parts. Some water bottles now today, it's like, why is there 10 different parts to this water bottle? That can get annoying, um, right? But it's not the outside that's annoying. What is it? It's the inside. It's having to clean the inside of a water bottle. It's so obnoxious, right? I, like, I, like, I don't even have, like, I'll admit, I don't have the manliest of man hands, right? Um, yet to try and stick my hand, to get it into the water bottle, to scrub inside the water bottle, right? And then you have like, do I really have to buy a special cleaning tool just for the couple water bottles that we have? Because that's annoying. Um, And and yes, um, I do appreciate nowadays they make some reusable water bottles that screw off at the bottom too, that they're easy. Oh man, that's amazing. It's, It's great. Um, but what I find ironic is, right, it's the inside that's harder to clean than the outside, and, and it's the same for cleaning us humans. It's the same for cleaning us humans. It's far easier to clean the outside than the inside. And Peter talks about this in one of his letters. In 1 Peter 3, this is what he says. 
And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus who has gone into heaven and has at the right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Right? It seems fairly clear that in the waters of baptism, our focus is not taking away the physical dirt that we have on us at the time. Right? We don't dunk people in the baptistry because they need a bath. That's just a happy coincidence. Um, no, no, no. Right? How does baptism clear our conscience? Well, in the beginning of the message, I talked about the things that, that stick and just don't want to go away. Um, and, and you should look up this video on the internet. I should have got it for this morning, but there's a video on the internet, and there's this fisherman, um, and he happened to, I don't know how he got it, uh, but he had a squid's ink sac, um, and he was playing with it, and he wanted to show um, how effective the ink is. And so he goes, in this little tiny ink sac, he rubs it all over his hands, all of his, he covered his entire arms in black, pitch, pitch black black. Um, and then, you know, he thought it'd be, you know, I'll show you how effective this is. Well, then the video cuts to five days later and nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed. They're still black. The only thing that's changed is like in between his fingers where, you know, your fingers rub together. That was the only part where the black hadn't come off. Because sometimes there's those things in our life that stick and, and, and they just don't want to come off. And sin is like this. It sticks and just doesn't want to go away. It coats us in this goo that no matter how much we scrub, no matter how much soap we use, you know, right, I'm going to get the bristle pad out here pretty soon, and I'm going to go like, ah. Like, it, we can't get it to come off on our own. We come to the realization, I, man, I need help. <laughs> and this is all symbolic, but this is what baptism represents. This is part of what baptism represents, is that when we are dunked in those waters, we are being cleaned. That that sin that we sat there and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed, that sin that plagued our conscience, that we just couldn't get off our mind, we have a hard time focusing because we just have that on our mind It helps us clean, not the outside, but the inside. The book of Hebrews also talks about this. Chapter 9 of Hebrews, verse 13 says, The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. All right, let me put this all together. We have those sins and times in our life that taunt our consciousness. They make us question whether or not we'll ever be able to move on from them whether or not we'd ever actually be able to get it off our hands. And what breaks my heart is hearing people talk about how, well, I can't, I can't come to church. You don't know what kind of person I am. Well, I don't, I, maybe not. I know what type of a person I was when I came. I know what type of a person I was when I needed Jesus, when I had things on my hands that I couldn't get off. And yes, we can scrub all we want. We can use the soaps, the sponges, the scrub brushes. We can use a belt sander if we want. It's not coming off on our own. The issue is that we need help. We need to use the right type of water. And it's not anything special about the water that's in this baptistry. It's actually empty right now, so that's not going to help much. Um, but, you know, there's nothing special about that water. It's whiting water. If anything, it's more dangerous for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy prays for me because I drink from the tap. But as John, 
as he talks about the act of Christ's baptism and his death on the cross, he talks about the waters and the blood being tied together. The water and the blood testify to the same thing, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And the link between these two is in our baptism as well. Because the waters of our baptism also represent being washed in the blood of Christ the only thing capable of cleansing us completely both inside and out. And while our guilt may take, uh, while our guilt may make it hard for us to understand this, being washed in the blood of Jesus gives us the ability to stand before God with a clean conscience. I think of a final verse from a well-known hymn. It's one of my favorite verses out of any hymn. And when before the throne... I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Man, that's truly amazing. Someday we will be able to stand before God in confidence that Jesus has washed away our guilt but there's not only some far away benefit of having our conscience washed clean. That last part of the section in Hebrews says that Jesus has done this so that we may serve the living God. Has anyone ever had that one thing with their appearance that was just off? And then all day, all you could think about is, are people noticing this, right? Are people noticing um, that I have a stain on my shirt? Right, if you're in your teenage years, are people just staring at this pimple in the middle of my forehead? Like I just like I just want to have my hand here all day. Right? Do people notice that I'm not wearing matching socks? Right? Or have you had that bad hair day and it's like I just I just I know people aren't looking at me, but I feel like people are just staring at me. Or, you know, last year as I did, I accidentally shaved my beard off. You remember that? And then the whole day I'm just like, I'm like people just smile and I was like, I know what you're smiling at, and it kills me on the inside a little bit. Right, you're trying to be nice and not mention it, but it's okay. I'm dying on the inside. <laughs> it's so hard to think about anything else because the whole time we're just concerned on what people are thinking about our appearance. When we are stained with sin, so much of our concentration can be taken by, do people notice what I've done wrong? Is that what they're talking about when I turn around? Do they say to themselves, oh, there's that guy? And when our mind and conscience is plagued with these thoughts, how are we supposed to get anything done? And this is why it matters right now that Christ has cleansed us from the inside out. Because if someday you are capable of standing before the God of the universe, knowing you don't have to worry about his thoughts on you, then no one else's matters. And I, I wish I could tell you that people would not make comments. I wish, you know, that was a thing. Or that your own mind would just, you know, instantly stop worrying about such. But it's a process. And as we continue to understand what it means for our lives to be cleansed by Jesus, that will come. Our baptism is this wonderful reminder of what to concern ourselves with. That when people make comments or when our mind tries to taunt us, our baptism reminds us that we have been washed clean. Our conscience cleansed by Jesus and we can stand before God in confidence someday. And if we can stand with confidence before him, there is no reason we can't stand before anyone else in confidence. Such freedom allows us to serve God more effectively because we are less concerned about what people think about us. We are only concerned about helping God's mission in our life. And we can go out knowing we are sinners, knowing that we've had struggles and continue to have struggles, but most importantly, that Jesus has washed us clean. And there are others who need the same others who are being tortured by the guilt on their conscience. 
who on their own keep trying to wash their hands. They keep going, they're trying different things and they're trying to figure out how to get this off and they can't figure it out and it is our job. It is why we have the confidence that we do, the confidence that Jesus gives us to come into their lives and say, hey, I know what you need. It's the power of Jesus' blood. It's for Jesus to wash you clean to teach them what the waters of baptism have meant and continue to mean in your life. Because both this water and the blood point to the same thing, that we need Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. Will you pray with me? Dear God, I know there is nothing special in itself of those waters, of that water that we put in the baptistry. But I am so thankful for what that water represents. The cleansing that it brings into my life, not just to clean me from the outside, but to clean me on the inside. To help me move, move on from the, the guilt that is on my conscience. That yes, God, someday because of Jesus who will be standing there beside me, I will stand before you in confidence knowing that Jesus has taken care of my guilt for me. And so God, let me take that confidence that I've been given and use it now in my life to not concern myself with what other people are saying, to not concern myself with where my mind wants to go and to wander and to focus on that guilt but to know that I am forgiven and cleaned. To put those things behind me so that I can serve you more effectively in my life, that I can go out to those who are guilty as I was and help show them how they can be washed clean. to show them through the waters of baptism, through Jesus' death on the cross, exactly who he is, that he is your son, that he is the Christ. He is our savior. So yes, we thank you for him and we thank you, God, for what you continue to do in our lives. That's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. You might have questions. That's okay. Sometimes we all do in our walk with the Lord. And we just want to say as a church, if this is your first time here or if you have questions, reach out to uh, either Jed, myself, the elders. We'd love to be able to build a relationship with you. Say hi to you in the back of the foyer here after the service and just get to know you better. You don't have to question your eternity if you choose not to. You have the opportunity today to know that your fate in eternity is sealed within the blood of Christ. And I would invite you to just, if you have questions, there's no reason to be embarrassed. There's no reason to be ashamed, have guilt. Your penalty has been paid for you. It's It's been paid for me and my family, and it's been paid for you too. All you have to do is accept it. Will you stand with me this morning as we close out with our final song this morning, knowing that the battle has already been won? in the blood There's future grace that's mine today that Jesus Christ has won So I can face tomorrow for tomorrow's in your hands And all I need you will provide just like you've always I'm fighting a battle You've already won No matter what comes my way I will overcome Don't know what you're doing But I know what
mercy. There is mercy in the way. Man of old today. And when it's gone, I know you're not. You are my hope and stay. When the sea is raging, your spirit. Oh, I know that in His will, yeah, I'm fighting a battle. You've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. No, no one you're doing. But I Jesus this morning, if you make that decision, Lord, we love you and we praise you this morning, Lord. I ask that you would bless this congregation, this family, Lord. Let them know that because of the choices that they have made or if they wish to make, Lord, that your fate and their fate are sealed together. A cord of three strands is not easily broken, Lord, and we recognize our dependence on you. Lord, help us to go out in faith this week. 
with courage, with boldness, and gladness, Lord, knowing that the battle's already been won. In your son's name, amen. We'll see you guys in a week. Take care.